My name is Nickel, oh Nickel. Lately, I've still been getting a lot of people saying the videos aren't reaching their sub boxes. So if you are subscribed to the channel, it would help out a lot if you hit that bell, check that box, and push save. That way you'll have notifications on. So if you did that, thanks a ton. But for now, let's just jump straight into it. Five unsolved Overwatch mysteries. Junkrat's treasure. First, a little background before diving into the mystery. After the Omnic crisis, the Australian Liberation Front, an anti-Omnic terrorist group, of which Roadhog was actually a member, carried out a sabotage operation on Australia's Omnium. And if you didn't know, Omniums are basically the self-improving robotic factories that Omnics were created from. Anyway, the Omnium's fusion core exploded, which destroyed the facility, but had the unintended consequence of turning the Australian outback into an irradiated wasteland. The few survivors in this harsh landscape made their living gathering scrap and debris from the wrecked Omnium. Jameson Fox, better known as Junkrat, was one such scavenger. But one day he discovered a valuable secret in the ruins of the Omnium. He'd found his infamous treasure. And so far, the true nature of this treasure hasn't been revealed, but we do have a few clues. First, we know that whatever Junkrat found made him a target for gangs and mercenaries, to the extent that he partnered with Roadhog to be his bodyguard. Junkrat's treasure is also known to the other Overwatch characters, such as Hanzo. There's an in-game voice interaction where Hanzo says, Where did you hide your treasure? You could hardly have it on your person. With Junkrat replying, Treasure? Uh, sure, I don't know anything you're talking about. Hanzo's statement that you could hardly have it on your person could be taken in a couple ways. He could mean that whatever treasure Junkrat found is too large for a single person to carry around and keep hidden. Or on the other hand, Hanzo may just believe that it would be extremely foolish to do so because of how valuable it is. But maybe Junkrat doesn't have a choice. He carries his treasure with him because what he found wasn't some physical item that could be hidden away in a safe, but in fact was some information. After all, Junkrat's bio only mentions that he found a valuable secret. We all also know that Junkrat has a deep mistrust of Omnix, and some have drawn a connection between this and the secret he found, that what he found was some sinister truth about the Omnix themselves. In a Reddit thread speculating about Junkrat's treasure, user The Slam said, another element of his character is his strong distrust for Omnix, which is on the same level as that of Zarya. This intrigued me because, while Zarya feels this way because of an Omnium, that attacked her home, Junkrat has no such experience, yet he feels the same. And what he's referring to is that unlike Zarya or Roadhog, Junkrat's bio doesn't mention him being hurt by Omnix in any way, yet he hates them just as passionately as the other two characters, if not more so. He continues saying, you could chalk this up to classic bigotry, but I think it's more deeply seated than that. Essentially what I'm saying is that Junkrat's treasure is a dark truth about the Omnix, and he's holding on to it until it becomes relevant. How Gabriel Reyes Became Reaper Reaper has been described as a remorseless killer in a failed genetic experiment. The cells of his body undergo constant decay and regeneration at hyper-accelerated speeds. Even more disturbing is his seeming ability to feed off the essence of those he kills, leaving his victims' bodies as pale, empty husks drained of life, their cells showing signs of intense degradation. In the Overwatch comic, Old Soldiers, Anna Amari briefly removes Reaper's mask and confirms what many have suspected all along. Reaper is the new identity of former Overwatch agent Gabriel Reyes. So the question is, what happened to turn the leader of Black Watch into who we know now as Reaper. Like Jack Morrison, later known as Soldier 76, Reyes was a product of the US government's Soldier Enhancement Program. This controversial experiment used science to give soldiers superhuman speed, strength, and agility. Also, both Morrison and Reyes were a part of the original Overwatch team, but when Reyes was passed over for promotion, and instead Morrison became the leader of Overwatch, a rift developed between them. This grudge led Reyes to secretly sabotage Overwatch from within, his efforts culminating in a battle that destroyed Overwatch's Swiss headquarters, with Reyes and Morrison supposedly dying in an explosion. Both of them later resurfaced with new personas, but only Reaper emerged genetically modified. There are several theories that I'm going to talk about for why this might have happened, and Mercy plays a central role in all of them. For one, Mercy is an expert in applied nanobiology for the treatment of life-threatening injuries. It's certainly possible that Reaper's condition could be a side effect of this technology. Most telling is a voice interaction where Mercy asks, What happened to you? And Reaper responds, You tell me, Doc. Along with another voice line where Reaper accusingly tells Mercy, Don't forget. 
You're the one responsible for this. Given that Mercy can resurrect players in game and is confirmed to have helped save Genji from the brink of death, the most obvious theory is that Mercy botched an effort to save Reyes from injuries he suffered in the Swiss attack. It's possible that she even tried to bring him back from the dead. Interestingly, she may have done this in secret. Mercy was known to oppose her commanding officers on many issues, and Overwatch leaders probably wouldn't want to save the man who just destroyed their Swiss headquarters. Also, in Old Soldiers, Reaper accuses Overwatch of leaving him for dead, and Anna is shocked to see that Reyes is still alive, which is more evidence that Overwatch did leave him for dead, but that Mercy tried to save him on her own, which is why no one else knew about it. Another theory is that because Switzerland was also Mercy's homeland, it would make sense that she carried out research at the Swiss Overwatch facility. The explosion could have exposed Reyes to some experimental technology that Mercy had yet to perfect afflicting Reaper with his self-described curse. And probably the darkest theory is that some believe Mercy actually tried to murder Reyes using her own nanotechnology. Redditor RandomLagger54 explained, Another possibility, Mercy was ordered by Morrison to discreetly kill Reyes before he could lead an open revolt with hostile versions of her life-saving nanobots. However, the attempt failed due to Reyes's super soldier program regeneration counteracting the attack, leaving him in a perpetual cycle of death and rebirth as his cells repair themselves just as fast as the nanobots destroyed them. And this actually kind of fits with the current lore. If Reyes was given a medical procedure to turn his own body against itself and kill him, it's no wonder he'd be angry enough to attack Overwatch's headquarters and specifically Mercy's base of operations. It would also explain his thirst for revenge and why he's been hunting down former Overwatch agents. Similarly, Mercy could probably feel a great deal of guilt for not performing the procedure. This could be why she seemingly has no con contact with other Overwatch agents as shown in the comics and the animated shorts. She also has a voice line where she says, Overwatch was shut down for a reason. Maybe it's best it stay that way. And strangely, she doesn't have any voice interactions with Soldier 76, despite both being old school Overwatch members. It's possible they're no longer on speaking terms after Morrison ordered her to assassinate Reyes. The King's Row EMP Generator Humans and Omnics have a tense relationship in King's Row, and although modern London was largely built through Omnic labor, in King's Row, Omnics are denied the same rights as humans. To this day, the Omnic population is forced to live underground in a city beneath the city, sometimes referred to as the Underworld. And the situation is about to get even worse. King's Row is a playable hybrid map in Overwatch where players first capture a checkpoint and then escort a payload to the heart of the city. But what many people overlook is that the payload is actually an EMP generator, and an EMP can kill Omnics. Junkrat alludes to this with a voice line saying, So we're delivering a bomb to scrap some bots, and I'm getting paid for it. My kind of job. So someone is trying to finish off the King's Row Omnics for good, but who? The most obvious culprit is Talon. After all, the Talon agent Widowmaker assassinated Omnic spiritual leader Tecarda Mondada while he gave a speech at King's Row. And just as a side note, Mondada's death has been memorialized on King's Row by the large statue of him near the first checkpoint. And a picture of him also hangs near the stairs at the Meridian Theater, which is where he gave his final speech. Ultimately, we don't yet know who's behind the attack and their motives are even less clear. It's possible that some hate group simply wants to kill as many Omnics as possible. However, you also have to consider that such an outrageous massacre on Omnic civilians would easily provoke a violent response. And this is especially true in King's Row, where human and Omnic tensions are among the highest in the world. The second Omnic crisis is already being fought in Russia, and it's possible that some group is hoping to incite a similar uprising in King's Row as a part of a larger conspiracy. Widowmaker is brainwashing. Blizzard describes Widowmaker as the perfect assassin, a patient, ruthlessly effective, efficient killer who shows neither emotion nor remorse. But this wasn't always the case for Amalie Lecroix. In her former life, Amalie was married to Gerard Lecroix, the Overwatch agent leading the team's operations against Talon. After several unsuccessful attempts to take out Gerard, Talon turned their attention to Amalie instead. They kidnapped her, reprogrammed her personality, and then set her loose as a sleeper agent. Soon after, she was found by Overwatch agents and she returned to her life with Gerard. And as far as anyone could tell, she was unharmed by her ordeal with Talon. 
Two weeks later, her programming kicked in and she killed her husband in his sleep. Afterwards, she returned to Talon where she trained in the covert arts. Then Talon altered her even further. They slowed down her heart rate, which turned her skin blue and eliminated her ability to feel emotion. With her humanity gone, nothing stood in her way towards being the perfect killer. And there's lots of lore outside of her official bio to show that this is the case. In the comic Legacy, Widowmaker is shown ruthlessly sniping numerous Overwatch agents. While she was never mentioned as a member of Overwatch herself, she appears to at least be acquainted with the Overwatch team because of her husband. This is shown later in the comic when Anna Amari is shocked to find out that the sniper killing her squad is Amelie Lecroix. Their former relationship is what causes Anna to hesitate and miss her chance to kill Amelie. But Emotionless Widowmaker has no problem firing a bullet straight towards Anna's head. Furthermore, Widowmaker plays the villain in many of the Overwatch animated shorts. In Alive, she murders the peaceful Omnic spiritual leader Mondata. She even has an in-game voice line bragging about this. Playing her in King's Row can trigger the line, Ah, the sight of one of my finest kills. That day, I felt alive. And in the Overwatch cinematic trailer, she even takes aim at an innocent child simply because he's a distraction. However, this idea of Widowmaker as a completely emotionless killer was called into question when Anna was added into the game on July 19th, 2016. The patch introduced a voice interaction where Anna says, Gerard was a fool to love someone like you, and Widowmaker replies, you don't know anything about him. Her defensive response hints there is still some trace of her personality inside of her. Also in game, Widowmaker will occasionally say, ah, Gerard, in a longing way. Finally, Widowmaker has an appearance in the comic Reflections, where she visits Gerard's grave on Christmas Eve. At this point, there's no doubt she feels something for her deceased husband. It's possible that Talon never brainwashed her as completely as they thought thoughts. Or alternatively, Widowmaker's brainwashing may be wearing off after all these years, with traces of her old personality and past life coming to her. If Amelie's humanity is returning, this could definitely affect her status as Talon's most capable agent. So the question of exactly where Widowmaker stands is still unclear, because it seems as though she may be undergoing yet another change. Sombra's Conspiracy Sombra's true name is a mystery, but we know that she grew up an orphan in the aftermath of the Omnic Crisis. She was also one of the world's most gifted hackers. Even as a child, she hacked politicians, corporations, and governments. Sombra also played a key role in the Los Muertos gang and their revolution against the Mexican government. Eventually, Sombra's hacking led her to discover evidence of a global conspiracy, or at least what she believed to be a global conspiracy. And while investigating this, Sombra was detected for the first time in her hacking career. This is depicted in Sombra's origin story shorts. Presumably, we see her hacking at her PC when suddenly, electric currents burst from her computer, and her monitors each display a mysterious red eye symbol. This obviously spooks Sombra enough to go underground and eliminate all traces of her old identity. And the short further shows Sombra gets some kind of mechanical enhancements to her spine and back, apparently so she would no longer need a computer to do her hacking. Sombra had effectively become the computer herself. In the same video, Sombra goes on to say, now I'm ready. I will find out who really runs the world. And as she narrates this, the short shows Sombra opening up a strange map connecting various figures in the Overwatch universe, all branching to the eye symbol in the center. Most likely, this map relates to the conspiracy she referred to and shows the connections between the powers involved. For example, we see that Overwatch is connected to the Shimada clan through Genji, and Talon and Numbani both have a connection to Doomfist Gauntlet. Volskaya Corporation is also featured on the map, which could explain why Sombra decided decided to blackmail their CEO, Katya Voskaya, in the infiltration short. It's unknown if Overwatch, Talon, Lumerico, or the other groups represented have any knowledge of the conspiracy they're supposedly part of. No other characters besides Sombra has referenced the conspiracy directly. And this could be because nobody else is aware of it, or they're trying to keep it covered up. And we can't discount the possibility that Sombra is simply delusional. Assuming there is a true conspiracy, however, what does the eye at the center represent? Well, some have pointed out that the Shambali, a group of Omnic monks, which Zenyatta is a member of, believe in the philosophy of the Iris. Zenyatta often says, pass into the Iris, when he pops his alt in the game. Being that the Iris is part of an eye, some users believe the eye is a symbol for the Iris philosophy. In the thread called the Sombra Eye Conspiracy, infographic, examining each image, analysis and theories, Tells315 explains, this is actually a very good point to bring up. 
the Omnic monks all expose the philosophy of the iris, and the symbol at the center of it all is the eye. Perhaps they are worshipping the ones behind the Omnic crisis and may not even realize it. Worse, they are converting others into the worship as well. Tracer, for example, seems to be really into the teachings of the iris. Imagine if it should come out that she's a follower of the one pulling the strings and didn't even know it. And that's everything. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, let me know by leaving a comment down below with which of the five mysteries you think is the most interesting. You can just even put the number that it was, one, two, three, four, or five. One last thing before I go, if any of you guys want to submit stories for me to talk about in future videos, all you have to do is go to the Discord link that is in the description of this video. And once you're there, you can read how to submit news. And that's all for today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. And if you haven't checked out some of these other videos on the channel, you can click on them to check them out whether you're on PC or on mobile. Either way, it still works now. Thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll see you next time.